The stenosis of RCA is 70 percent, left anterior descending is 80 percent and LCA is 90 percent. The treatment for this patient, is it medical or CABG or angioplasty? The right answer for this question is CABG because as per the recommendations of Bailey and Lau 20th edition and uh, page number 949. So, the indication for surgery in summary box as given in Bailey 59.6 is very clear any stenosis more than 50 percent is left main stem that is critical left main stem disease more than 50 percent in proximal left anterior interventricular artery. Okay. Three main coronary arteries disease triple vessel disease two vessel disease including proximal LAD all these are indications for CABG. Now, going back to the question, RCA is 70 percent and uh, LAD is 80 percent and LCA is 90 percent is definitely then indicated for CABG. And uh, coronary artery bypass graft today, it is about the beating heart surgery, okay. We, all the patients are attempted for a beating heart in case any eventuality to convert to go to the pump or else most of the cases are done by beating heart and the special stabilizer that is used is octopus, octopus. And uh, the concept today is total, total arterial revascularization. And the graft of choice is Lima, left internal mammary artery, Rima, if you require multiple grafts, Rima, okay, right middle mammary artery. And uh, if you want both, it is called Bima, B I M A. And if you use both, you can use a concept called Lima, Rima, Y. So, if you want to use both the grafts, because it is going to go for more than three bypasses or four bypasses, then you will construct it's what is called Lima, Rima, Y. Total arterial revascularization is the concept today for CABG. Okay. Next question. Antenatal scan has a double bubble sign and the postnatal presence with non-bilious vomiting. So, it is a very, very clear cut case. I mean, the options are duodenal atresia, gastric gallbladder, pyloric atresia. Now, uh, double bubble sign is the keyword here, double bubble sign. Okay. The answer is duodenal atresia. We always say the most common type of intestinal atresia, most common type of intestinal atresia is duodenal atresia. Okay. And it presents with double bubble sign. So, it presents with double bubble sign. And um, it is present in the second part of duodenum, second part of duodenum. And it is associated with uh, Down syndrome. It is associated with uh, endocardial cushion defect, endocardial cushion defect. And it is associated with uh, as a differential diagnosis of annular pancreas, annular pancreas. Okay. So, uh, gastric valves, you do not get a typical double bubble sign, typical. So, that is the reason why it is a very typical case of a duodenal atresia and, uh, and being antenatal. So, that is the most important, it goes in favor of duodenal atresia. And uh, treatment of choice, duodeno duodenostomy, duodeno duodenostomy. See that typical double bubble sign as given in Bailey in 266, the gastric and the first part of the duodenum. Okay. If it is above the ampulla, only if it is below the ampulla, most common is above the ampulla. Okay. So, it is a typical case of duodenal atresia. Aspirin is a protective in which cancer? So, it is a very, very clear cut case. Is it lung cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer, colonic cancer? The right answer is colonic cancer. So, it is very clearly given in Bailey and Love in 20th edition, page number 1359. Okay. The epidemiology and evidence of supporting prostaglandin inhibitors and particularly aspirin in preventing colorectal cancer, word to word, is substantial. Given the potential hazards of taking for long term aspirin, the challenging is to be identify the individuals for whom a protective benefit overweighs the harm. Other factors that increase the risk of developing colorectal cancer include inflammatory bowel disease, cholesterol may be a marginal risk of right cellular colon cancer. Is it very clear? Okay. So, it is about aspirin as a protective agent for colorectal cancer and here the answer is colonic cancer. 
a post operative patient was uh, started on aminoclavulinic acid suddenly develops rashes itching all over the body feels breathlessness okay which among the following drugs is not used hydrocortisone adrenaline chlorpheniramine chlorpromazin so any patient develops an allergic reaction to a drug so what all among this can be given and which is not routinely given any answer the right answer is chlorpromazin so chlorpromazin does not have a role here so it is an antipsychotic drug whereas you have uh, in antihistamines hydrocortisone is an anti inflammatory and a corticosteroid and adrenaline which is always used as an emergency a patient with an ulcerative colitis having more than four episodes of diarrhea fever tachycardia and severe dyspepsia on biopsy what will be the management so you see a patient with ulcerative colitis four episodes of diarrhea fever and tachycardia okay and severe dyspepsia so the keywords these are the keywords and patient has a systemic complication what will be the ideal answer the right answer is you should go for surgery now in bailey it is given what are the indications for surgery in ulcerative colitis page number 1323 okay page number 1323 which clearly says severe or fulminant disease okay failing to respond to medical therapy number 1 and a chronic disease with anemia frequent stools and urgency and tenesmus steroid dependent disease the remission cannot be maintained without a substantial dose of steroid which have a harmful side effect which have a harmful side effect and intolerance or side effects of a medical therapy required to control the disease examples steroid psychosis azathioprine induced pancreatitis okay so it is very clear this case will definitely go for surgery okay and one of the main factors because this become systemic and episodes of diarrhea are more than four and also a severe dyspepsia where it has a chances of developing into a risk of malignancy and you can see the other factors growth retardation children and adolescents neoplastic change yeah this is the most important severe dyspepsia see word to word from bailey associated with sclerosing cholangitis extra intestinal manifestations rarely and severe hemorrhage or stenosis causing obstruction so i think all the factors have come into place Ten year old child presents with a swelling in the umbilical region. On palpation, there is a small defect in intestinal content, which are reduced with difficulty. Best management would be. What is the best management? Option A is surgical repair. Option B is observation. C and D is not able to recollect. The right answer is surgery. Any age more than two years, if it does not recover spontaneously, surgery is an option, as given in Bailey, page number ten seventy three. I mean, uh, whatever the question I have seen so far, most of the questions. i could see in bailey and low in recent edition if you ask me what percentage could be approximately i will say it is almost 70% 65 to 70% of questions i could see the references directly from bailey and uh, almost close to 25% is from sebastian and uh, 5% 2 to 5% is from schwartz there can be overlap of bailey and also also sebastian okay so umbilical hernia in children is a common condition in up to 10% of infants with a higher incidence of in premature babies the hernia appears within few weeks of birth and is often symptomless but increases in size on crying and assumes a classical conical shape sexes are equally affected but the incidence in black infants is up to 8 times higher than than the white obstruction or strangulation extremely uncommon below the age of 3 years conservative treatment is indicated under the age of 2 years when the hernia is symptomless okay and uh, parental reassurance is all that is necessary in 95% will resolve spontaneously if the hernia persists beyond 2 years beyond age of 2 years surgical repair is indicated very clear see that now what is the age that is given in the question 10 year old child 2 year old patient child with vst mild pulmonary artery hypertension cardiomegaly on chest x ray qp qs ratio is 2 is to 1 and the best management would be bst closure mm-hmm. transesophageal echo cardiac catheterization observation so the answer is cardiac catheterization okay so uh, according to bailey and lau uh, 696 20th edition of bailey echo cardiogram confirms the diagnosis yes as given in the question and can estimate the degree of shunting across the defect 
the cardiac catheterization can quantify the right and left cardiac pressure and the degree of pulmonary hypertension as well as the demonstrated setup of oxygen saturation between the left and right ventricles. Generally, surgical closure is indicated for large defects when there is a failure to respond to medical therapy. This is the keyword here. Failure to respond to medical therapy. For left to right shunt, more than 2 is to 1. Okay. When there is signs of increased pulmonary uh, vascular resistance and the presence of complications of VST, these include aortic regurgitation, which occurs in 5% of the defects, infundibular stenosis, which leads to a uh, progressive and leads to shunt reversal, and infective endocarditis, often presenting with pneumonia or pleurisy, as an infected emboli in a VST with a typical left to right shunt flows in pulmonary circulation. So, let us go back to the question. Two year old child, VST, mild pulmonary artery hypertension, cardiomegaly. And uh, QPQS ratio is 2 is to 1. I think uh, cardiac catheterization almost has given an uh, idea. I think uh, we have to go for VST closure. The answer has to be changed to option A. The option has to be changed to answer A. Because in the question, it is given as mild pulmonary artery hypertension. If the question remains the same, okay. If it is the same, the answer should be VST closure. Okay. Let us go back to the explanation once again and reads echocardiogram confirms the diagnosis. Yes, of course. And can estimate the degree of shunting across the defect. Cardiac catheterization can quantify right and left cardiac pressures and the degree of pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary artery hypertension is given as might. As well as they demonstrate the setup of oxygen saturation between right and left ventricle, left and right ventricle, and generally surgical closure is indicated for large defects. When there is a failure to respond to medical therapy, for left to right shunt, if it shunt is more than 2 is to 1, this is given in the question. So, the best answer would be VST closure. Let us go to the next question. Post orchidectomy after 3 years with a bony metastasis in the prostatic cancer, increase in trend of PSA management, increase trend of PSA, the management is. With the image given, I do not have the image, but what is the drug given? The right answer is docetaxel. As per Bailey and Love. Bailey and Love 20th edition, page number 1537, metastatic disease. Once metastasis has developed, the outlook is poor. For patients with symptoms, there is no dilemma. Androgen ablation will provide a symptomatic relief in over two thirds of patients. For patients with asymptomatic metastasis, the timing of treatment is less clear. Systemic chemotherapy with docetaxel should be considered if younger and bitter men. Is this the question the same? If you could recollect if this is the question the same, the right answer is docetaxel as per Bailey and Lowe. This reference is given in Bailey. Best study for correlation between disease and the risk factor. This question is same. This question is almost the same as it was taken before your surgery in biostatistics. You know what is the answer? I mean this I took reference from the faculty, SPM faculty and the answer was cohort study. The cohort studies is often considered as the best observational design for establishing the causation as they follow the individuals over time, allowing for examination of temporal relationship between the exposure and outcomes. So, they can provide a strong evidence of correlation between the disease and the risk factor. See that? Between the disease and the risk factor and can allow the estimation of incidence, rates and relative risk. Disease and risk factor. So, where is it given? Is it given in PARC? Social and Primitive Medicine, 27th edition, page number 161. Okay. Female with 4 into 4 centimeter uh, palpable lump with 1.5 centimeter palpable lymph node and FNAC proven carcinoma. Lymph node is uh, benign. Mammogram shows 3.5 centimeter lump with an extensive diffuse calcification of the entire breast. Best option would be? The best option should be? Obviously. Yes, the size is more than 4 centimeter with a palpable lymph node okay so the right answer is mrm okay mrm so patties there are three types of mrm you have patties achin claws and scanlon so mastectomy is indicated for large tumors in relation to the size of the breast and multicentric disease and diffuse microcalcification on mammography Indicators from DCIS and BRCA positive cancers. So, local reference following BCS or patient's preference. Uh, it entitles removal of the entire breast tissue, including the skin over the tumor and the nipple and areola complex and axillary tail. The breast tissue is usually extends to a point 
with an anterior pre-mammary fascia fuses yes with the underlying pectoral fascia okay so the right answer would be mrm for this case because this case will come under contraindication for bcs aspirin prevent which cancer so aspirin will prevent colonic cancer okay so this we have red particularly aspirin preventing colorectal cancer from bailey 13 59 20th edition of bailey in love correlation coefficient minus 1 between a and b variable means what what does it mean does it mean a increases a increases and b decreases both remain the same, both increases together, no correlation. What is your answer for this question? The right answer is option A. Correlation coefficient minus 1 indicates that to prefer negative linear relationship between variables A and B. This means that variable A increases and variable B decreases in a perfectly linear manner and vice versa. Therefore, the correct answer is A and A increases and B decreases. This relationship is often depicted graphically as a downward sloping straight line with the plotting variables against A against variable B. So, the answer is it is given in uh, SPM Park 27th edition, page number 678. Option is A. Okay. Now, the very same image we discussed in the class also. Hope you remember this the image based class. I do not know whether the same question was asked in the exam also because it was one of the recall given by one of the students in the WhatsApp. Is this what the asked in the exam? Similar image was asked in the exam. If the similar image is there, the answer is intersusception. The answer is intersusception. This is called target sign. What is the sign called? Target sign. Intersusception. Okay. So, this is image is given in Bailey and Love 1379. Okay, 1379 Bailey and Love. Oral hypoglycemic agent with anti tumor effect is. This question is a little out of the box. The right answer for this question is metformin. The right answer is metformin. Metformin, is, this is given in Harrison 21st edition, page number 3111. Metformin agent. Among those listed with the substantial evidence supporting anti tumor effects, metformin, particularly against colorectal cancers. Okay. Three signs is seen in. It is very simple, straightforward. Only two options are recollected now. So, among the three options, it is coactation of iota. I mean, it is a very basic level question. Everybody could answer this. Again, in Bailey and Love, 20th edition, page number 967. The heart is uh, usually a normal size in older children and shows a classical three sign replacing the typical aortic knuckle. The upper part of the three sign is a dilated left subclavian and the middle part is a narrowing of a coarctation site and the lower part is a post nautic dilatation of the descending aorta. Now you see where are the most of the questions are asked. Now you can get an idea. So, Whatever is there, because this Bailey 20th edition comprehensively very exhaustive, very, very an exhaustive book, new edition. Critical limb ischemia defined when? The right answer for the question is option B. Angle pressure less than 50, toe pressure less than 30. This we could see word to word, which is there where ankle pressure less than 50. Okay. And uh, see, this classification is seen even available in Bailey also. But uh, for those students who have read Subdistin also, they should also have some feel. Okay. Some satisfaction. So, I just want to take from Subdistin also. And uh, toe pressure less than 30. So, it is grade 3. So, it is a severe ischemia or critical ischemia. See that? And ABPA less than 0.39. An image of cholangiography was given 
and uh, that was looking like a percutaneous transhepatic cholangiogram PTC, something like that, it seems. That is what the student said, okay. And uh, this is ERCP and this is uh, PTC. So, if PTC is done, it was T2 picture, okay. So, whatever according the question was, and if it was T tube, def definitely you would have seen the tube in place, yes, inside the CBD, and the tube would have come like that, correct? It was T tube, okay, fine. So, whatever it is, you just have a idea because this was the image given. So, you should answer accordingly what was given. Uh, burns a child presents with 30 percent of total body surface area involvement. Which among the following is the best option for the management? Isotonic saline with the dextrose. A ringer lactate with 5 percent dextrose and 5 percent dextrose. What is the answer? Ringer lactate with dextrose. Adequate resuscitation of a burned patient it was taken from Subistan, 21st edition, page number 491. Adequate resuscitation of a burned patient involves the establishing and maintaining the reliable intravenous access. Uh, increased times of beginning to resuscitation of burned patient results in poorer outcomes and delay should be minimized. Venous access is the best attained through a shorter peripheral catheters and unburned skin. However, veins and burned skin can be used and are preferred or preferable to intravenous access. Supervisional veins are often thrombosed to full thickness injuries and therefore not suitable for cannulation. Saponous vein cutdowns are useful in case of difficult access and are used in preference with the central vein cannulation because of lower complication rates in children younger than 6 years of age, experienced practitioner can use an intramedullary axis in the proximal tibia until the intravenous axis is accomplished. Lactated ringer, see that lactated ringer solution without dextrose is a fluid of choice, except children younger than 2 years who should receive 5 percent dextrose ringers lactate. Now, we have to go back to the question. So, you need to know about the age. With respect to the age, with dextrose or without dextrose, it will differ. So, it was 4 years. Huh? So, if the burns of a child is 4 years, then what it says, younger than 2 years only, you will give with dextrose. So, those age above 2 years, okay, less than 6 years, you will give only RL. Okay, now what we will do is, we will, we will just say without dextrose. Now, is this answer okay? So, because we have made a correction in the question, yes, a 4 years old child will give RL only without dextrose. Yes, that is an answer. So, without dextrose. Okay. 88 year old case of cholecystitis with an acute renal failure, uncontrolled diabetes mellitus, best option in the management is open cholecystectomy, laparoscopic cholecystectomy, tube cholecystostomy, conservative management, then electrocholecystectomy. What should be your answer? The answer should be tube cholecystostomy. So, how it is done? Okay. Now, so you will put in a percutaneous tube cholecystostomy. Okay. So you will drain all the infected bile and you will drain it because diabetes could be an impending gangrene. If it ruptures, it will endanger life. So you prove a tube cholecystostomy. Then you will stabilize the patient for a period of time to do a cholecystectomy later. So that should be the answer. Okay, tube cholecystostomy is an answer that you should know. So, the same has been explained in the explanation given as per Tokyo guidelines. Okay, as per Tokyo guidelines. And this, the Tokyo guidelines is the same almost, this is the same both in Bailey and also in Substan. Okay, a oral cancer infiltrating into the alveolus, the best management option would be, the best management option would be. Excision with segmental mandibulectomy because the alveolus is involved. Yes, then a segmental mandibulectomy has to be done. Okay. So, it is in Subistant 21st edition, page number 780. 
Okay. The alveolus or alveolar ridge accompanying the gingiva, extended to the gingiva buccal sulcus, laterally to the floor of the mouth and the halparate make up the dental surface of the maxilla and mandible. Squamosal carcinoma is the most common malignancy of the alveolus in much more common at the lower gingival. Upper gingival primaries often extend onto the heart palate and many surgical consideration of the same for both. The adequate tumorous section requires the resection of the alveolar ridge mucosa and the underlying periosteum. The periosteum of the mandible is strong tumor barrier and tumor can abut the bone and may be resected along with the adjacent periosteum only. The tumor adherent to the periosteum should undergo the excision of marginal with marginal mandibulectomy, which involves the resection of superior and inner cortical portions of the mandible with the preservation of the continuous rim. If there is more than the superficial cortical erosion of the mandible and uh, uh, marrow space is at risk of harboring a malignancy, thus uh, segmental mandibulectomy is required for adequate marginal control. See, you need to understand where you do marginal mandibulectomy. That is, without a radiological evidence of involvement of the bone. Here, it very clearly says it involves alveolus, infiltrating into the alveolus. So, if there is a oral cancer and also there is a lymph node which could be positive without radiological evidence of the mandible, then you will shave the outer table of the mandible. It is called marginal mandibulectomy. Here, there is an infiltrating into the alveolus. That means the bone involvement is there, the tooth socket is involved, the loosening of the teeth will be there. So, that segment of the mandible has to be resected for clearance. So, that is the whole idea. Okay. Prophylactic total colectomy done in patients with HNPCC. False statement is. So, all are true. That means to relieve the patient anxiety, avoids regular colonoscopy. Avoids future risk of malignancy. No need for colonoscopic surveillance of the remaining rectum. Right answer here is option D. Colonoscopic surveillance has to be there. Even you do, you plan for it. So, screening colonoscopy is recommended annually for at risk patients beginning either the age of 20 to 25 years or 10 years of younger than the youngest age of diagnosis in the family, whichever comes first, because of the high risk of endometrial carcinoma. Okay. Transvaginal ultrasonography and endometrial aspiration biopsy is also recommended annually with the age of 25 to 35 years because there is a risk of 40 percent of risk of developing a second colon cancer. Total colectomy with the ileorectal anastomosis is recommended once adenomas or colonic carcinoma is diagnosed. Okay, annual proctoscopy necessary because of the risk of developing rectal cancer remains high. Similarly, prophylactic hysterectomy or bilateral salping ophrectomy should be considered in women who have completed childbearing age. So, you have done total colectomy. So, remaining rectum, you need to go for surveillance. How you will not say you will not do surveillance? It is very, very clearly given. Okay. So, it is recommended once the adenomas or colonic carcinoma is diagnosed, you will do a iliorectal anastomosis following total colectomy. So, here you see annual proctoscopy is necessary because of the high risk of developing rectal carcinoma remains high. So, the right answer is option D. You have to Remaining rectum has to be under surveillance, whether the cancer could develop there also. So, skin sparing mastectomy, what is the risk of recurrence? It is less than 25 percent. You see the actual risk, okay, skin sparing mastectomy. So, this uh, reference was taken from Schwartz 11th edition, page number 591. Removes all the breast and nipple areola and uh, scars from any prior biopsy procedures. There is a recurrence rate of less than 6 to 8 percent comparable to long term recurrence rates reported with standard mastectomy. With skin sparing mastectomy used for patients from TIS to T3 cancers. So, there we go. So, here is only T1, T2. So, TIS to T3 it is can be done and the risk is less than 25 percent only recurrence risk. Okay. Actual risk is what? 6 to 8 percent only. Okay, now 33 year old patient CT abdomen shows a mass in segment 4, arterial phase updated and rapid wash out in venous phase. What is the answer? So, the right answer is hepatic adenoma. Okay, hepatic adenoma is a very typical feature. So, hepatic adenoma, the diagnosis is very, very clear and uh, you will see the contrast agent has improved our ability to differentiate hepatic adenomas for FNH 
with a high degree of accuracy. And you know that hepatic adenomas have a significant risk of spontaneous rupture and intrapaternal bleeding. Okay. So, adenomas or hypertentins, adenomas or hypertentins, T1 weighted images, enhance early after gadolinum injection and which use of liver specific MRI contrast. Okay, liver specific MRI contrast. So, it is a very, very typical case of uh, you can see that that you will be able to see the liver lesion containing hepatocytes with an intact biliary extrusion mechanism will take up this contrast agent and we easily distinguished from the other lesions that cannot do. Okay. So, it is almost typically looking like hot hepatic adenoma. Local anesthetic agent with 8 hours duration is right answer is bupivacaine. So, we can see here bupivacaine and uh, you see ripovacaine is almost 180 minutes to 360 minutes. 360 minutes is how many hours? Yes, among the given option, bupivacaine has the highest 6 hours. As per uh, Schwartz, it is given as 6 hours. So, among the options given here, bupivacaine could be the appropriate answer. The maximum mass. Is the answer the, is, was the question 8 hours in your exam? So, among the options, bupivacaine could be the reasonable answer. Stenocrotomastoid muscle tumor with torticollis. What could be the appropriate management? It could be physiotherapy because most of them it could be a result of a birth injury and uh, I mean spontaneous resolution can happen and uh, if required physiotherapy can be given. The presence of lateral neck mass in infancy is associated with the rotation of the head downwards to opposite side of the mass indicates the congenital torticollis lesion results from fibrosis of the sternocleidomastial muscle and the mass can be palpated in affected muscles approximately two thirds of cases. And diagnosed by ultrasound, histologically the lesion is characterized by deposition of collagen and fibroblast around the atrophied muscle cells. In vast majority of cases, physical therapy based on passive stretching of the affected muscles is of benefit. Rarely surgical transection of stenocrotomastoid is required. Yeah, observation could also be uh, one of the treatment, but among this best would be a physiotherapy as given in the book. Vast majority of cases. See that in vast majority of cases, physical therapy based on passive stretching of the affected muscle is of benefit. So, as per <laughs> what is given in the book, I am quoting it. Timing of uh, thyroidectomy in men 2A patient. So, mutation in patients with men 2A will be the timing of thyroidectomy, prophylactic thyroidectomy in patients of medullary cancer of thyroid. The right answer is less than 5 years of age. This is a very beautiful question which is taken directly from Bailey and Love 20th edition, page number 1657. Thyroidectomy is performed and to predict the phenotypes including pheochromocytomas in general in patients with leg cancer aggressive mutation. Thyroidectomy may be delayed for more than 5 years, especially if there is a normal annual serum calcitonin and neck ultrasound in less aggressive family history and or family preference. Now, we start the explanation from here. Children with MEN 2A and mutation of codon 634 is advised to undergo thyroidectomy at less than 5 years of age. And those with MEN 2B related mutation should undergo the procedure before 1 year of age. Very, very important. So, 2A within 5 years and 2B within 1 year. No option was less than 5 years in exam. Okay, then what was, what was the other options then? One was within two years. So, within two years. Instead of this option, what was for this option? 5 to 10, more than 10, less than 2 is already there. Within 2 already I have added. So, if this option you cannot identify, then the next best answer will be this. Okay. So, 2 years is less than 5 only. So, we have to take that way only. Not done. 
Okay, answer is D. Okay, answer is D. So, men to A within 5 years, men to B within 1 year. Less than 5 years, no? So, 2 years is the best answer available in the options given. 17 year old boy and uh, PTH and serum calcium elevated neck scan shows normal FDG spect. Normal FDG spect shows uptake in the posterior media serum. See, neck scan is normal. This should be a stop here. FDG spect shows uptake in the posterior media serum. More to the left side. What could be the possibility? System view was positive. Huh? Can you recollect it? So, whatever might be, system may be positive. Is it posterior media stenum or anterior media stenum? So, if it is posterior media stenum, which parathyroid will be involved? Which parathyroid will be the ectopic? Is it a superior? Correct. The right answer is option B. Superior will be in the posterior media stenum and inferior will be in the anterior media stenum. So, there is a change. The same is explained here. Okay. A patient with a medullary a cancer of thyroid with a image of the tongue neuromas. Now, what type of men is this? It's a straightforward question. So, it will be typically men to be. So, Bailey, again go to Bailey, 20th edition page number 1655. Men to A, medullary thyroid cancer, pheochromocytoma, primary hyperparathyroidism, lichen planus, and amyloidosis, and uh, codon uh, mutation exon 10, exon 11. And meant to be and medullary thyroid cancer, pheochromocytoma, morphinoid habitus, mucocutaneous ganglion neuromas, exon 16, and familial MTC, okay, MTC codon 609 and, and further, and meant to A and with Hespong disease, yes, is associated with MTC with pheochromocytoma and primary hyperparathyroidism and Hespong disease, okay.